All right, folks, today we're going to be looking at this 2021 Infiniti QX80 versus this 2020 Lincoln Navigator. So I really wanted to look at this, but I needed a control unit and we're going to be using that Infiniti because, you know, it's my like basically my favorite luxury SUV. It's styled really well. It looks really good. And uh, I think the Navigator Man, it's crazy. It like opened up this segment in the late 90s. I think this thing came out in 96, 97, but then it's just gotten blown away. Like the Cadillac Escalade is definitely more prestigious now. When this guy came out, it was like the one and only luxury SUV. Then Mercedes and all of them started following, um, but they had much smaller SUVs and they just, they didn't fit the comfort luxury bill that this one does even though they had or the, the make behind them. Uh, so anyway, I like the way this SUV looks. I like the wheels on it. Um, these are going to be 22 inch wheels. So this is a very good size. I like this navigator thing in here. I like the turn signal indicator right here. I love this use of chrome right here. I think the Escalade also does that. There's chrome right here, right here. There's no chrome here. Um, but this this vehicle does have automatic running boards and so we will go ahead and step in actually the back of the vehicle um, and i love automatic running boards i think they're super dope um, so stepping in there is a little bit of a step up but this running board makes it so so easy so even if you're toting around grandma or whatever you know you'll be fine and this feels very very luxurious sitting in this seat i like this right here resting my arm here is dope all of this is going to be capacitive well no not capacitive but very kind of stealthy this is a digital screen right here um yeah this is multimedia control the cup holders here are nice um this thing does not come up but it's like a Toyota design where you can kind of pull this up and you have a ton of space in here. So before I get too far ahead of myself, um, we'll take a look at this door. So the door is closed solidly and uh, the running board kind of closes once you do that. But I love this lever to open the door. That's super convenient, super nice. Um, these doors obviously open wide. I love this wood inlay in here. I love this drilled speaker grill. You know, this is a very good looking door. Uh, very handsome. I love the metallic tip here. I love the leather wrapping here with the stitching here, the LED lighting here. This is a nice touch. Same thing with this. This is almost like a leather briefcase holder. So you know you're stepping into luxury. Um, when you get into this vehicle, you have this chrome trim here, this leather mat pocket here. You have these controls here for HVAC. Um, and then you also have like storage down here and then cup holders down here. So, uh, you know, you can kind of stow these away. Um, and then you have the house outlet here which you can't really see that great. And then you have your USB outlets here and your traditional charge port here. I mean, this is a very, very handsome, like boardroom type vehicle interior. I like it. You have the panoramic roof here. So you got a ton of natural lighting coming in here. Um, I love that wood going across the front. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. This looks a little basic to me. I think if you had more knobs and stuff versus digital displays i'd i'd you know look a little bit more favorably upon that you do have vents right here so that's super convenient and then we'll take a look at this back seat which i love that they carried over this kind of from the expedition where you can kind of slide this forward and get in this running board makes it so easy to step into this vehicle i cannot tell you how easy it is i love that um Here's another thing that I just don't understand. This piano black is not holding up that well. This seat feels okay. You know, I could honestly, I could honestly sit back here for a while with this seat at a normal position. I mean, three adults back here would be kind of tight. Sitting in the middle is not as bad as you think because the floor is flat. So shout out to Lincoln for doing that. You do have, you know, LED lighting back here and a microphone back here, vents back here as well. 
And then you also have, you know, good glass back here. And this isn't going to be the most comfortable place to sit, but for a third row, it's not bad. You have a charger right here, cup holders right here. Um, you can let those seats down right there with that. I mean, I can sit back here. It's not super comfortable, but uh, let's see. Can I? The vehicle's off, so this button is not going to work. I could sit back here for a couple hours. I mean, I would say this is better off as a six-seater. Um, and again, this is kind of odd. All right, so this is a better look at those wheels. I mean, these look very, very massive. They're very large, and so you know this is a luxury SUV. Um, I feel like the paint on this vehicle doesn't pop quite as well as it should. And that's been a thing in the past with Lincoln. Um, I'm not sure if it continues to be a thing. The back of this vehicle is very handsome. All right, so the tailgate is automatic and you have an LED lighting here or LED light there and one right here. Um, and you can let down all the rows from here, which is super dope. This seat I need to adjust, but you have a ton of space as you can imagine with all the seats down. Um, you even have some storage back here and a little bit of storage right there. So this is a very, very functional luxury SUV. I do like how you have this lip spoiler here. Um, and I can't say enough about these wheels. They look super, super good. You know, one of the concerns might be if you're looking at one of these, is this going to be just a rebadged expedition and my answer is no on that um it definitely feels like a different vehicle altogether um these doors are super wide super solid you do have heated and cooled seats in here like all of this stuff takes up a lot of space so it's not super pragmatic or practical but that's not what you want with luxury you want to get in and put your arm down and for it to feel comfortable easy to drive um and this steering wheel looks very nice. The buttonry is, is nice. You have your cruise control here. You have your Bluetooth phone voice controls here. Your volume controls here. Um, it doesn't look as classy as it could. Whoever had this didn't take the best care of the vehicle, but polished and, and really cared for it. This is going to be a very, you know good experience um this does have massage seats so that's super dope i like the use of chrome lining outlining and accenting in this vehicle i think it looks very classy here this is a nice touch um this is also a nice touch you know engine start stop that is not the most user friendly place or natural place for that button but once you get used to it, it's fine it has an all digital display um, you have lane keep assist here. Not sure if this has radar cruise control. It does have paddles, which is dumb. I like that you have the gear selector here. That's pretty dope. You know, uh, you have automatic start stop, your electronic emergency brake here. You have wireless charging. You have USB charging. You have cup holders here. A lot of these are electronic, which, you know, is to be expected. And then you have a lot of space in here. You have your CD player in there. I don't know if it plays DVDs or not. That's probably all this thing is missing is screens in the back. So, I mean, this is a strong competitor with the Cadillac, but for re whatever reason, I feel like it's been dusted a bit by the Cadillac and not that it's like a really bad vehicle. Yeah, you have your sunglass holder here. So all in all, a very, very nice experience in this vehicle. You know, I really can't complain. There's a ton of room here. I'm so glad it doesn't have the standard e-brake that you do with your foot. You do have some trailer stuff. Uh, I don't believe this is four-wheel drive, so this is not four or all-wheel drive, but that's okay. The storage here is abundant. It's a very nice vehicle. Here's the seating. It's perforated. Um, it hugs you. It nestles you. I think they kind of stole the grill thing from Bang & Olsen. It's not a part of, you know, their brand. Um, this is interesting. It goes across the front. As long as it's well kept, it looks good. I think a darker wood would look a bit better, but I like the contrast in here, honestly. That, that looks really good to me. Anyway, let's take a look under the hood. All right, I do like the indicators here for the turn signal. And I like that this chrome is extra shiny and glitzy. I feel like that's an intentional touch 
and uh, it pays off very well. The headlights look really good on this. Um, yeah, it looks very traditional, very modern. None other than a recessed 3.5 liter twin turbocharged engine. All right, so this is still a super heavy SUV. Um, this V6 gets 16 in the city and 21 on the highway, 18 combined. It has 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. So, I, you know, I'm going to say this. Like, what you're getting in this engine is just more linear power. So that affects driving. So when you're in this vehicle, getting on the highway or zooming up to 45 or going 60 to 80, it's going to have a lot of oomph and it's going to feel more luxurious in that way. So I get why Ford did the, I don't know what they call the iteration in the Lincoln, but it's basically an EcoBoost V6. I mean, this compared to the Infinity, this feels like more like a, a fitted suit. And this is more of a classic suit. So it just comes down to personal taste. Like All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the video. And we are actually not going to take a look at the Infinity QX80. This is the 2021 that I'm walking around now, but I'm only in there briefly because I took so much time to go over the Navigator and I realized it's just a dope vehicle. Um, I believe the Infinity beats it narrowly in the looks department, but in every other measure, my champion, uh, my fave falls short. Um, interior volume, um, just engine refinement and power, and then also interior design. I mean, the Infinity held onto this interior too long and it's kind of an old school look. I think they redesigned it in 2022. I mean, it's a great effort by Infinity, that vehicle has been going strong for so long, but the Navigator is just, you know, a bit better in this comparison. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think the Lincoln Navigator has always been a great large SUV. Um, and so kudos to Lincoln on their design and just the build of this SUV. I think if you actually drove it and you understand how turbochargers work, this drivetrain is going to feel more refined. It has more gears, more power. The only question is longevity. And I think these days you'll be fine.